So uh, please uh, direct your attention to Kathy Kendrick and Andy Dukes. They celebrate 30 years of Empire Strikes Back cards. presentation on trading cards in general for Star Wars, so just focusing on Empire Strikes Back is a little different for us. Uh, we're not sure how the timing is going to go. We hope to have a chance to do Q&A at the end, um, and hopefully we'll even let Andy talk a little. Um, when you think about Empire Strikes Back trading cards, you really do need to go back to the very beginning uh, with the early Tops cards, which came out in 1980. Uh, this slide shows some sample pictures, and uh, this is pretty much uh, not that dissimilar from the original Star Wars cards. You have you know, slightly more cards in each series of cards from Empire Strikes Back, but they did fewer sets. So you only had three sets to collect instead of the five that they did for Star Wars. Star Wars was massive. Um, they went a little crazy. They learned their lesson with leftover cards. Uh, one of the things that's really fun about uh, the trading cards is the wrappers that they come in, which seems odd, but this is the thing that a lot of collectors didn't keep when they were eight years old. How strange. When I was eight years old, uh, I went for the gum, and I actually liked it. My mom was one of those people who didn't believe in sugar, and this was the closest I could get. One of the things about the wrappers is that they actually record some of the stuff that you could get that wasn't just trading cards associated with the trading cards. They were always pushing you to join the fan club. Please join the fan club. It was really cheap back then. I don't think you got that much, but it was cheap. You could also buy an uncut card sheet. And they did this not just with Empire Strikes Back and with Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Those uncut sheets were sold by the thousands. And they were cheap, really cheap. Uh, unfortunately, most of them didn't survive. Most of them were rolled up, uh, hung on a wall, and exposed to sunlight. Really not so good for trading cards. So you get a lot of uh, Empire Strikes Back cards that have a pink hue now that uh, they've been in the sun for a while. Really fun with the Empire Strikes Back was the candy filled pegs because everybody wants a Star Wars character, especially a Chewbacca, uh, full of little hard candy. Uh, the Topps Company was a candy company, and really, originally, all of these trading cards were just ways to shield them to small children. But you could also get them to go out and buy little plastic heads filled with candy, even better. And I'm told that I'm not loud enough. The other thing, and if we go back to the first slide, that you could get from the wrappers was this great little red box. The little red box was paper, uh, sort of cardboard, sort of paper, and it was your collector box for your Empire Strikes Back cards. The entire set did not fit in one box. You had to get multiples, but you could mail away on the back of the uh, wrapper to get your collecting box. These were not big sellers. Tops later ended up trying to uh, get them out to people by putting them in packaging with uh, bulk cards. So you get 50 cards and a trading card box. Um, and even those didn't sell very well. The nice thing about things that don't sell very well, they become rare. Uh, they become fun on eBay 20 years later when you think back as a child and say, wow, I never got that silly box. Uh, now I want one. Some things that are unique in the uh, Topps original Empire Strikes Back sets, uh, the Ralph McQuarrie paintings. This was really the first uh, time that the Ralph McQuarrie paintings got, you know, really good preview. And interestingly enough, they were called space paintings. Um, so instead of portraying these as the background work on which Star Wars is based, apparently this was artwork that was hanging in the halls of you know, star destroyers everywhere. It's not really clear. They're great cards. They're really fun. Uh, unfortunately, like a lot of the cards, if they were exposed to daylight, 
um, too much, the colors really fade badly. So if you go to the Ralph McQuarrie Gallery down that way and look at the original artwork uh, and compare it to the trading cards from vintage tops, there is no resemblance, none. Um, definitely encourage you to go down to the Ralph McQuarrie Gallery uh, and have a look at some of the original artwork. Fantastic stuff. Uh, of course, the mail-away collector box is listed here. Uh, but the other unique thing with the Empire Strikes Back cards, compared to the Star Wars cards, they decided to get clever with the stickers. As a child, I thought that the stickers might spell something. And I was constantly trying to put them in an order that made sense. It didn't. You would think that sticker one, two, three, four would be A, B, C, D, E. No, random letters on random stickers, they didn't spell anything. I thought there was a secret word. Uh, just like I was told that if you, you know, got the star with the Indian pointing at it on your Tootsie Roll Pop that you could send away for something free, I thought that if you figured out the secret of the stickers, you got something. It wasn't true. You could, if you were lucky, spell your name. Most kids did. A lot of these stickers are no longer available um, or are stuck on someone's wall underneath a layer of paint. So the, uh, the stickers will make up these four pictures. Um, very helpfully, unlike the Star Wars set, they produce the images on the back of some of the stickers rather than having to guess as a jigsaw puzzle without the picture of what you're trying to make. So it makes up the images of the poster and the, the, the crew and Yoda and then the, the asteroid chase on, on, the other, on the bottom. When Tops um, produce some of the sets of board, You'll find that the images are virtually identical to the sets in, in the States. Um, the Australian one's almost the same. The main difference with the Canadian ones is, of course, the text is in French and English. Scanlon's is kind of an interesting set. Uh, it's essentially the same as the American set. And you're thinking, why do I care that the Australians got a different set? And part of the reason is, is because the space paintings, or at least some of them, on the back, described how you could enter the Scanlon's competition. Uh, unlike the sticker fiasco, this was actually a real competition. Uh, weirdly enough, um, you know, in Canada, when the US does a mail-away competition, the Canadians always have to solve a math puzzle. Um, for the Scanlon's competition, they wanted you to write out the entire checklist for the trading card set on a piece of paper uh, and then submit uh, an essay question on why you liked Scanlon's gum. You were to send this in to them by November. Sometime in December, they would draw for prizes. They don't tell you what the prizes are. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, for my friends in Australia, it was just you know Kenner Star Wars toys and stuff. But uh, you know, apparently, kids did this. <laughs> you filled out the entire checklist of cards writing out the number and the title for the card, and then wrote an essay about why they liked Scanlon's gum. Really fascinating. Strangely enough, a lot of the kids thought they were in detention at the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a set of um, 30 Topps photo cards. This is quite a, a, an adjustment from the normal size. These are actually quite big cards. They're about eight by six. Yeah, eight by six inches. Thirty cards in the set. Um, really bold images. Um, sold in packs. Very nice to collect, and they do display really, really well. This was one of those interesting things Topps did with the Empire Strikes Back that they didn't do for Star Wars, and that they did not repeat for the Return of the Jedi. So it's kind of a little experiment in the middle. Hey, let's see if people will buy these really big cards. I think people actually did buy these, but you know, for whatever reason, they didn't repeat this for the third film. This is one of my personal favorite Empire Strikes Back sets. This is the Greek bootleg set, which in many cases are simply copies of the um, Topps Empire Strikes Back cards. But you'll notice down the bottom, Captain Kirk seems to have sneaked in. <laughs> also, the alien next to Captain Kirk is also from the Star Trek movie. 
they hadn't quite got the hang of this. Um, it's an interesting set because for those people who are really into the obscure collections, you'll see that some of the cars have got the, um, I'm going to pronounce it Olympia, because that's the newest I can manage, in large text. You'll also see them in small text. Some people are collecting the set with the small and the large text. Large text. I think that's going a little too far. These are quite rare to find. Um, this is a um, flyer for the Greek set. It was an interesting set in that if you manage to collect cards, for instance, numbers 1 to 20, and if you manage to collect a, a winner's card, you could send off for a prize. The same with 1 to 50, 80, 100, etc., which you could possibly read on here. What you probably can't read is the rest of the Greek. So conveniently, someone has translated it for me. Um, so you can see that if you manage to collect cards 1 to 20, you'd win a key ring. Whether that was the Star Wars key is unlikely, but then going through the theme list, you can get a Chinese lantern, a Vio Master, which we still have no idea what that is, <laughs> a football, a radio, a hairdryer, a wristwatch, and a bicycle, which would probably been quite an impressive prize back then. But to be honest, these days, if you've managed to collect your 200 cars, they'd be probably worth more like a motorcycle than a bicycle. This is um, a, a, a set of, these are images probably from the Spanish set. I say probably because the images were shared across the four sets. The English set were stickers, and the Spanish set were on cards, but they all share the same images. There's about 200 in the set. With the, um, the UK album being stickers, you, you just peeled the backs off and they stuck in, the same with the French and the Spanish, sorry, the French and the Dutch. But with the Spanish, they like you to stick them in, so you actually have to stick the stickers in the album yourself. Blue not included. Uh, these are actually uh, very small in size, so they're not your standard trading card size. Uh, the, one of the nice things about trading cards, if you're a collector, is you can start fairly easily and get things that are really inexpensive, like the Topps cards. Uh, you can go down to a booth downstairs and get a set of the Topps cards, the vintage Topps cards, for $15 to $35. If you want to get something like this for the Greek set, um, you're going to have to try a little harder. Um, but once you start collecting the trading cards, the slippery slope between I've got all the Topps cards to why don't I try to get some of those Spanish cards, uh, it's pretty quick. Um, because there's 200 of these, that makes it harder. Because they were meant to be stuck in an album and people glued them in, uh, it gets a little harder still. I do have in my collection some that have clearly been uh, glued with that Gorilla Glue stuff um, and then peeled back out of the album to be sold on eBay, and I don't care. <laughs> this was a, another interesting set from that Spanish, going on from the Spanish set. If you manage to complete your set and potentially stuck them in the album, you could then mail them in and they would send you back these prize cards. With the state of the mail these days, I can't imagine anyone ever mailing in their completed set in the hopes that it came back with the winning cards. This is a set of um, 12 cards. These are actually um, more like the normal size of the top trading cards as against the set which were about half size. Very cool set, some really interesting pictures in this one. One of the nice things about this set is I don't own it, so if you have it, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, an image of some, uh, some lay stickers from Puerto Rico. Um, I'd never heard of this set, let alone seen them, until I saw one of the panels in Celebration Europe. I think it was one of the food panels. Having found them, that they existed, I then spoke to various people and now I own the set. It's great to go to the various different panels. You're always likely to learn something. I mean, my main focus is trading cards, but having gone to a food panel, I found out something on that. So going to the various panels is a great way to, to learn things. When we were looking through the various lists of cards, it's amazing. It's almost about 50-50 of the sets of cards you can buy and the sets of cards, stickers, etc. that come as promos with food items. 